Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Ah, uh, CNN, what a freaking joke. I tried giving them a little bit of credit. You know, I try to be as fair as I possibly can. When the new leadership group was coming in, I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. I stated multiple times I wanted to see CNN have a little bit of a redemption arc. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. I don't like to believe that most people or most entities are beyond saving, beyond redemption. But with some people and some organizations, I mean, they're just hopeless. They're beyond help. CNN is one of those organizations. It started off pretty good. They were firing journalist hacks left and right. But instead of replacing them with people with credibility, they promoted Jim Acosta and Caitlin Collins. Two totally unlikable, unintelligent, zero charisma Democrat shills get promoted, get their own shows, and it seemed like the logic was promoting them because they gave Donald Trump a hard time during their time working as White House press correspondents, and of course, Caitlin Collins recently with her CNN Trump Town Hall. You know, I tried to give CNN the benefit of the doubt, but they proved to everyone with those decisions that they haven't changed, that there hasn't been any change at the network, in that the most important thing at CNN still remains being a partisan hack, being duplicitous, being dishonest, and obviously without important change at CNN, they're not magically going to turn the ship around. You know, Caitlin Collins isn't going to miraculously become a very popular media character just because she was handed a TV show. In fact, the exact opposite is happening. Caitlin Collins' show is a dismal disaster, tanking in the ratings, and it's really no surprise why. Let's have a conversation about that. Let's take a look at Caitlin Collins, who had an incredible opportunity here to make a real name for herself but instead she decided to walk the same path as little Chrissy Cuomo and little Don Lamont and little Bri Bri Stelter it's absolutely cringe and weird let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that I got some great moments to show you guys we got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape all right folks so Caitlin Collins is very quickly finding out report CNN leadership is unhappy with Caitlin Collins and her dismal ratings the latest reporting from from Inside CNN, the basement-rated fake news outlet that will almost certainly be sold for parts within the next few years, suggests that the outlet's leadership is not pleased with Caitlin Collins, nor with the ratings of The Source. They should be unhappy with themselves, not with Caitlin Collins. They're the doofuses that made the damn decision. A five-year-old could have told you that it wasn't going to end well, we predicted. Of course, that Caitlin Collins wouldn't succeed with her new show. They gave her the coveted 9 p.m. primetime slot. I mean, what a horrible decision. She's clearly a left-wing actor. She's clearly totally biased and dishonest. And on top of all of that, she's unlikable with zero charisma. Puck reported that Caitlin Collins' show, The Source, has shown little substantive growth since its inception in early June, and that Collins draws roughly a third of the audience that Rachel Maddow and Alex Wagner average on MSNBC. Also shocking was the outlet's report that Collins only draws a quarter of the audience that Sean Hannity draws on Fox News. Really, none of it is surprising. And I'll show you exactly why it's not surprising. Her most recent segment with Vivek Ramaswamy. Man, Vivek is the gift that keeps on giving. His media tour continues to be amazing. Anyways, back to the point. During that segment, Caitlin Collins showed exactly why nobody trusts her as a reliable news source or media talking head. There's this moment. Pretty clear. One thing that you will likely be asked about on Wednesday night is foreign policy. And you recently said that to protect Taiwan, you would do this. Guess what? We'll put a gun in every Taiwanese household, train them how to use it. That is how you make Xi Jinping think twice. Do you really think that would be a sufficient plan to deter a Chinese invasion if it includes long range missiles, ground troops, an aerial blockade, a naval blockade? Caitlin, I mean, all of Caitlin, the different measures Caitlin, here? Caitlin, 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 of course it's not sufficient. You take that tiny little clip when I've articulated it at the Nixon Library last week a one hour speech with a whole range of deterrents. That is part of it. But I've also said that I would pull Russia out of its military alliance with China. I've also said that we would bolster our partnership with India to be able to close the Andaman Sea and the Malacca Strait. I've also said that we would actually send a signal very clearly that we will defend Taiwan 
moving from strategic ambiguity to strategic clarity to say that we will defend Taiwan until we have semiconductor independence in this country. And so, yes, part of this is turning Taiwan into a porcupine. I think exporting our Second Amendment is a relatively free or low-cost way to do that. But I find it laughable that you will take that clip and then put words into my mouth as though that was a sufficient deterrent. Caitlin, with due respect, that's a joke, especially when I've offered We're not putting words as into... expansive of a deterrent strategy it's as I have. It's not putting words into... CNN doing what CNN does, deceptively editing a clip out of context completely, engaging in a pathetic little gaslighting tactic to try to make Vivek seem crazy. But there is absolutely nothing crazy about citizens' rights to bear arms as a deterrent to tyranny. Vivek is 100% correct. There was also this little interaction where she tries to make Vivek Ramaswamy seem like a nut job conspiracy theorist. A report in the Atlantic that you gave an interview to, you said, quote, I think it is legitimate to say how many police, how many federal agents were on the planes that hit the Twin Towers. Maybe the answer is zero. It probably is zero for all I know, right? I have no reason to think it was anything other than zero, but if we're doing a comprehensive assessment of what happened on 9-11, we have a 9-11 commission, absolutely there should be an answer the public knows the answer to. Explain to me what you meant there. This is really, it's funny. I mean, The Atlantic is playing the same game as CNN. It's funny. What I said is, on January 6th, I do believe that there were many federal agents in the field and we deserve to know who they are. On 9-11, what I've said is that the government lied. And this is incontrovertible evidence, Caitlin. The government lied about Saudi Arabia's involvement. There was a Saudi spy named Al-Bayoumi, who they lied, and the government lied, and the 9-11 Commission lied. We know that because declassified reports in 2021 Which revealed that Al-Bayoumi was indeed. What's that? Yeah, the report that the President Biden declassified. Yes. But your quote here, are you telling me that the quote is wrong 20 years later, here? yeah. But are you telling me that I'm your quote, you quote is wrong, wrong here actually. because it says... How many federal actually, agents were on the plane at the asked, Twin Towers? <laughs> yeah, when I, when I actually, and this is just lifting the curtain on how media works again, I asked that reporter to send the recording because it was on the record. He refused to do it. But getting You're it. saying that you were misquoted here. So we will take you at your word. Yes. You're saying you're, that you were misquoted here. But yeah. you were asked another time recently about whether or not 9-11 was an inside job. This is what your response was. 9-11, inside job or uh, exactly what the government tells us? I don't believe the government has told us the truth. Again, I'm driven by evidence and data. What I've seen in the last several years is we have to be skeptical of what the government does tell us. I haven't seen evidence to the contrary, but do I believe everything the government told us about it? Absolutely not. Do I asked you question. The 9-11 Commission, absolutely not. I mean, Vic, I think people look at those comments. They look at what you said in the Atlantic, which you say you're misquoted. They look at comments that you've made about the Federal Reserve adding zeros to media companies' bank accounts. And I mean, it looks like you're floating conspiracy theories with this defense of I'm just asking questions. Well, when you actually quote me, those are my words and I stand by them. So somebody else quoting me, putting words in my mouth, I have a problem with. But those words I stand by. The question Americans was, is 9-11 an inside job? And, and you didn't say about. no. <laughs> Caitlin, That's what you I just think people Caitlin, are looking you at. Caitlin, you, you know what's really funny? You literally just played that. You could play it for your audience again. He said, or do you believe everything the government has told us? And my answer was, I do not believe everything the government has told us but you see because the they point, lied. The point is and that I know this game comes open. up, Caitlin, it's every time there's game. an outsider who comes in. It leaves the door open, Vivek. <laughs> it leaves the door open. And someone who's Caitlin, a 9-11 truther looks at that and says, that that's exactly lies. what I believe. Turns but there's a difference in asking questions about Saudi Arabia's involvement and the government's involvement and then pushing this idea that whenever what your comment about who was on the plane, and then was 9-11 an inside job where you did not say no earlier. That's why it's important to clarify those comments, because otherwise it feels like you're towing the line when it comes to conspiracy theories. Caitlin, I, it is, I, I, I am guilty as charged that I do not follow the establishment super PAC donor approved script on these questions, but I am speaking truth grounded in fact at every step of the way. And that's what's really elicited something of an anaphylactic reaction of the kind we saw in 2016 against a different candidate. He shut her down entirely. She is so incredibly arrogant and dishonest, it's no wonder her show is failing. After the interview, Vivek shared some of his reaction. Scott Adams tweeted, CNN interview with Vivek, my summary. CNN, why did you say the 9-11 was an inside job? Vivek responds, I've never said that. CNN, oh yeah, well here's a video of you not saying it. Plays a video of Vivek not saying it. CNN, what do you have to say of yourself now, you conspiracy theorist? Vivek responds, the video you play doesn't show me saying anything like what you said, and I have never said it or believed it. CNN says, 
says, yes, but you can see why people might think that you believe it was an inside job because of you never saying it, as the video shows. Vivek then responds, this feels like the way you treated another candidate that I can think of. I changed all of the words, but the summary is fair. Vivek responded, hilarious interview with CNN last night, felt like I was talking to a petulant teenager. The Huffington Post then writes a piece, Vivek Ramaswamy's mansplaining to CNN's Caitlin Collins riles up critics. Ah, okay. Addressing totally dishonest, slanderous, fake news tactics is apparently now mansplaining. What an absolute joke. Vivek also responded to this ridiculous headline, writing, Speaking the hard truth to a female anchor isn't mansplaining. It's the exact same treatment I gave to Don Lamont a few months back. I believe in equal opportunity for all media dishonesty. Watch CNN's hilariously artificial clipping of my Taiwan defense plan last Last night, when in fact I've offered the most detailed deterrence plan of any candidate in either party. I didn't let the fake media get away with it. Fake politicians, beware. Caitlin Collins is awful. It makes no sense why she would get a promotion as a primetime anchor, except in today's media landscape, it does make sense. The only people who get hired and promoted at CNN and MSNBC and other networks alike are those who are willing to do the DNC's dirty work, like Jen Psaki, for instance, and the myriad of other Jen Psaki clones. That's the leftist media world that we live in. It's no surprise that the mainstream media is becoming more and more irrelevant by the day, is crumbling. It's no surprise why Caitlin Collins and her new TV show, The Source, it's no surprise why their ratings are in the dirt. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.